Happy Monday, everybody. My name is Griffin, and you're listening to the Command Valley Podcast. Today for our Deck Tech Monday, I'm going to be going through a deck that I built for Vito, Thorn of the Dusk Rose, which was spoiled from Corset 21. Before we begin, I just wanted to remind you guys to please like and subscribe. We have just hit a thousand subscribers, and we are very appreciative for everybody who has subscribed. So please join on the bandwagon and help us keep growing. Another reminder that this episode and this podcast is brought to you by GameGrid Lehigh. If you are in the Utah County area, please check them out. They have an amazing card selection, super friendly staff, tons of board game accessories, D&D accessories, and an amazing player area as well. All right, without further ado, let's jump into it. So Vito, Thorn of the Dusk Rose, is two and a black for a 1-3 legendary creature vampire cleric. He reads whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life and for three black black creatures you control gain lifelink until end of turn. So this is a super fun deck because we haven't had a commander that has the sanguine bond effect. We have had a couple of other creatures that have this effect, but not on a legendary creature. So it makes for an interesting deck to build. Now there are a couple of ways that you could build this deck, but mostly we're just trying to gain life. There are the two ways that I thought is you could either build a vampire tribal uh, with just a lot of lifelink creatures, or you could try just doing a full mono black life gain deck, which is what I have gone for. Now, before I begin going through the deck tech, I wanted to let you guys know that that I have included the card Exquisite Blood. So Exquisite Blood is four and a black for an enchantment that says whenever an opponent loses life, you gain that much life. Now with Veto out, any damage or any life gained or any damage that an opponent would take or any life gained would be just an infinite combo and you can just take out all of your opponents. Now, if you don't like playing combos, then you don't have to include this in, but I have included this card and some tutors to grab this card. So let's go ahead and go through the deck. The first thing that I've included in this deck is life link creatures, because every time we deal damage with a life link creature, we're gonna gain some life. And with Vito out, we're gonna be able to drain our opponents. For that, we've got Vampire of the Dire Moon, a 1-1 one, one for one that has death touch and life link. Gifted Aetherborn, two black for a 2-3 with death touch and life link. Murderous Rider, which is one black black for a 2-3 night zombie with lifelink, but you can also use his adventure, Swift N, which is one black black for an instant that destroys target creature or planeswalker and you lose two life. Vampire Nighthawk for one black black, we have a 2-3 with flying death touch and lifelink. Crick Son of Yogmoth, which is four and three Phyrexian black mana, which means you can either use black or you can pay two life. He has lifelink, and for each black in a mana cost, you may pay two life rather than pay that mana. And whenever you cast a black spell, you may put a plus one plus one counter on Crick Son of Yogmoth. So we're going to be gaining a lot of life. So we're not really worried about using his ability to pay two life rather than cast the black. So he can cast more spells in a turn. He also has lifelink and he gets pumped up when we cast black spells. So he can give us a lot of advantage throughout the game. Now, the second thing I've put in here is Extort. Extort is an ability that allows you to pay a black or a white whenever you cast a spell and each opponent will lose one life and you will gain that much life. So for instance, we have Thrill Parasite, which is one black for a 1-1 with Extort. You can also tap it, pay two life, remove a counter from target non-land permanent. Now, the more of these we have out, they will trigger separately. So if we cast a spell and we have a couple of Extort creatures out, we can gain a lot of life and be able to deal that damage to our opponents. Some more extort creatures, we have Basilica Screecher, one in a black for a 1-2, flying and extort. Crypt Ghast, which is three in a black for a 2-2 with extort, but he also says whenever you tap a swamp for mana, add an additional swamp to your mana pool. So that's mana ramp, and it allows us to drain our opponents as well. Very powerful card in this deck. Then we have Pontiff of Blight, which is Four black black for a 2-7 creature zombie cleric with extort, and other creatures you control have extort. This is going to be a powerhouse in our deck. If we have four creatures out with a pontiff of blight, we have five separate triggers of extort every single time we cast a spell. That can get nuts out of hand very quickly. So with lifelink and extort out of the way, let's just go through the different ways that we have of gaining life. Because there's tons of different ways and, and different unique abilities that allow us to gain life and drain our opponents with veto. First up, we've got death greater, which is one black for a 1-1. Whenever another creature is put into a graveyard from play, you may gain one life. This is especially good if you are faced up against a board wipe and there are 20 creatures out in the battlefield. You can gain that 20 life, deal that 20 damage from Vito, and maybe even take an opponent out of the game while doing so. We have Blood Artist, one in a black for a 0-1 whenever a Blood Artist or another creature dies. Target player loses one life and you gain one life. We also have Zulaport Cutthroat for one in a black whenever it or another creature you control dies. Each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. A lot of incremental life gain, but over the course of the game it will add up to a lot of damage. 
We have Diamond Mare for two generic. We have a 1-3. When it enters the battlefield, choose a color. And whenever you cast a spell of that chosen color, you gain one life. A Yara, first of Lockthwain. For black, 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 we have a 2-3 legendary creature of Noble. Whenever a Yara or another black creature enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. You can also tap her to sacrifice another black creature and draw a card. Disciple of Bolas, for 3 and a black, we have a 2-1. When it enters the battlefield, sacrifice another creature. You gain X life and draw X cards where X is that creature's power. We already want card draw in our deck, so the fact that we can have card draw that also gains us life is super helpful. Dread Presence, for 3 and a black, we have a 3-3 Nightmare. Whenever a swamp enters the battlefield under your control, choose one. You draw a card and you lose one life. Or Dread Presence deals 2 damage to any target and you gain 2 life. Twilight Prophet, for two black black, we have a 2-4 Flying Vampire Cleric with Ascend. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you have the City's Blessing, reveal the top card of your library and put it into your hand. Each opponent loses X life and you gain X life, where X is that card's converted mana cost. Grey Merchant of Asphodel, or otherwise known as Gary. For three black black, we have a 2-4 Creature Zombie. When it enters the battlefield, each opponent loses X life, where X is your devotion to black. You gain life equal to the life lost this way. Kukusho, the Evening Star, for 4 black black, we have a 5-5 legendary creature dragon spirit with flying, and when it is put into a graveyard from play, each opponent loses 5 life, and you gain life equal to the life lost this way, potentially gaining 15 life and making an opponent lose 15 more life with veto out on the battlefield. Noxious Gear Hulk, for 4 black black, we have a 5-4 artifact creature construct with menace, and when it enters the battlefield, you may destroy another target creature. If a creature is destroyed this way, you gain life equal to its toughness. Erebos's Intervention, for black and X we have an instant, choose one, target creature gets minus X minus X until end of turn and you gain X life, or exile up to twice X target cards from graveyards. Very helpful in a pinch, and make an opponent lose the life that you gained. Estanguinate, black black X for sorcery, each opponent loses X life, you gain life equal to the life loss this way. So even if you just cast Estanguinate for 6, X equal to 4, you are draining everyone for 4, you will gain 12 life, and you will be able to make an opponent lose 12 more life. Just little bits of life gain here and there can just make a huge difference. Tendrils of Corruption for a 3 and a black. Tendrils of Corruption deals X damage to target creature and you gain X life where X is the number of swamps you control. Brass is content for 2 black black we have an instant exile target creature planeswalker and you gain 2 life. Bontu's Monument for 3 generic we have a legendary artifact. Black creatures you control cost 1 less to cast. Whenever you cast a creature spell each opponent loses 1 life and you gain 1 life. Aetherflux Reservoir, for 4 generic we have an artifact, whenever you cast a spell you gain 1 life for each spell you've cast this turn, and pay 50 life, Aetherflux Reservoir deals 50 damage to target creature or player. We are very easily going to be able to be above 50 life, so having this out as a threat to anybody who might try to stop us or kill us, it's just one of the best cards that we can have. Very appropriately nicknamed the Death Star. Dread Horde Invasion, for 1 in a black we have an enchantment, at the beginning of your upkeep you lose 1 life and amass 1. And whenever a zombie token you control with power 6 or greater attacks, it gains lifelink until end of turn. Revenge of Ravens. For 3 and a black, we have an enchantment. Whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control, that creature's controller loses 1 life and you gain 1 life. Whip of Erebos. For 2 black black, we have a legendary enchantment artifact. Creatures you control have lifelink. And for 2 black black, you can tap it. Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste. Exile at the beginning of the next end step. If it would leave the battlefield, exile it instead of putting it anywhere else. You may activate this anytime you cast a sorcery. So all of these cards may not seem like they're very powerful or make a lot of impact on the board, but when having Veto out, you are actually making the opponents lose life pretty consistently throughout the game, and you will be surprised how quickly and how impactful that life loss and life gain will be. So now that we've covered the ways that we're going to gain life, let's cover the ways that we're going to take extra advantage out of us gaining life. First up, we have Bloodthirsty Aerialist, which is one black black for a vampire rogue with flying. Whenever you gain life, put a plus one plus one counter on Bloodthirsty Aerialist. Arcfiend of Despair, for a six black black, we have a six six flying demon. Your opponents can't gain life, and at the beginning of each end step, each opponent loses life equal to the life that player lost this turn. Very powerful. It will just double up that life loss that we're getting from V very scary card it will definitely get your opponents down to zero life very quickly if this sticks around villas broker of blood for five black 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 we have an eight eight legendary creature demon with flying for one black you can pay two life target creature gets minus one minus one until end of turn and whenever you lose life draw that many cards since we're going to be gaining so much life anyway we're going to have extra life to spare it's an amazing card draw engine 
Will of Lost Dreams. For four generic, we have an artifact. Whenever you gain life, you may pay X, where X is less than or equal to the amount of life you gained if you do draw X cards. An auto include in every single life gain deck. This is an amazing card to make sure that your hand is full, especially since we're going to be gaining lots of incremental life over the course of the game. Bolas' Citadel for a three black black black. We have a legendary artifact. You may look at the top card of your library anytime. You may play the top card of your library. If you cast a spell this way, pay life equal to its converted mana cost rather than pay its mana cost. And you can also tap it to sacrifice 10 non-land permanents. Each opponent loses 10 life. We're going to be able to take a lot of advantage off of Bolas' Citadel, especially because we have a lot of ways of gaining life when things come into play. So there's definitely a possibility where you can just cycle through the top card of your library and just play five, six cards that turn. Argo is blood fast for one and a black. We have a legendary enchantment for one and a black. You can pay two life and draw a card at the beginning of your upkeep. If you have five or less life, you may transfer Argo's blood fast. It then turns into Temple of Aklazots. A legendary land, you can tap it to add a black to your mana pool, or you can tap it to sacrifice a creature, you gain life equal to that sacrificed creature's toughness. A super amazing card draw, enchantment, and if we're less than 5 life, we can transform it, maybe get back into the game, and use that life gain to drain our opponents as well. Then of course, since we have Exquisite Blood in this deck, we also have Sanguine Bond, which is essentially just an enchantment that does the same thing as Veto. So if we have both Vito and Sanguine Bond out, we're going to be able to do a lot of life loss to our opponents. Let's go ahead and move on to the mana ramp in this deck, because that is very important. We want to make sure that we're casting multiple spells per turn, so there's a lot of ramp that I've included. We have Pyramid of the Pantheon for one generic. We have an artifact for two generic and tap. Add one mana of any color to your mana pool and put a brick counter on Pyramid of the Pantheon. Then if you have three brick counters on Pyramid of the Pantheon, you can tap it to add three mana of any one color to your mana pool. We have Sol Ring, Arcane Signet, Charcoal Diamond, Jet Medallion, and Hedron Archive as our artifact ramp. Black Market for three black black. We have an enchantment. Whenever a creature, whenever a creature is put into a graveyard from play, put a charge counter on Black Market. The beginning of your pre-combat main phase, add black to your mana pool for each charge counter on black market. Nurkana Revenant for 4 black black. We have a 4-4 four, four Vampire Shade with whenever you tap a swamp for your mana, add an extra swamp to your mana pool. And you can also pay 1 black and Nurkana Revenant gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn. Bubbling Mug for 1 black. We have a sorcery until end of turn. Whenever a player taps a swamp for mana, it produces an additional swamp. For our card draw, a lot of our card draw also has life gain on it, so I've covered a lot of it, but other card draw spells that I have included are Liliana, Dreadhorde General. For four black black, we have a legendary Planeswalker Liliana. She starts off with six loyalty. She has a static ability. Whenever a creature you control dies, draw a card. Plus one, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. Minus four, each player sacrifices two creatures, and minus nine, each opponent chooses a permanent they control of each permanent type and sacrifices the rest. Sign in blood for black black, we have a sorcery, target player draws two cards and loses two life. Read the bones for two and a black, we have a sorcery, scry two, then draw two cards, you lose two life. Erebos, god of the dead. For three and a black, we have a legendary enchantment creature god, five seven with indestructible, as long as your devotion to black is less than five, Erebos isn't a creature. Your opponents can't gain life, and for one in a black, you can pay two life and draw a card. We also have this super cool card that I didn't actually know about until I found this. It is an enchantment called Greed. For three in a black, you can pay one black, draw an extra card, and you lose two life. The last thing I wanted to talk about for this deck is, even though we have a lot of ways of gaining life from cards, Vito also can give our creatures lifelink, which can help out in a pinch, and is probably a lot better than I'm estimating. So I've also included a lot of ways to make just small tokens so we can give all of our creatures lifelink and maybe finish off the game if we're getting close. We have Ophiomancer. For two and a black, we have a 2-2 two -two creature human shaman at the beginning of each upkeep. If you control no snakes, put a 1-1 one -one black snake creature token with death touch onto the battlefield. Endrixar, Master Breeder. For four and a black, we have a 2-2 two -two legendary creature human wizard. Whenever you play a creature spell, put X-1-1 one -one black thrall creature tokens into play where X is that spell's converted mana cost. When you control seven or more thralls, sacrifice Endrixar, Master Breeder. And we also have Bitter Blossom, which is one and a black for an enchantment. Beginning of your upkeep, you lose one life and put a 1-1 one -one black fairy rogue creature token with flying onto the battlefield and that is the deck guys thanks so much for watching and tuning in i hope you guys have found this deck enjoyable and even though it may seem like mono black life gain seems a little bit counterintuitive to black this deck is actually fairly powerful i would say the power level is about a six or seven however if you do choose to put in the tutors to get that exquisite blood this might be a seven or eight Please leave a comment on this video if you guys have any other ideas for good cards that slot into this deck, or maybe something else that I'm missing. 
But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. Please, again, remember subscribe and like this video. Leave a comment on some other decks that you guys want us to build. We appreciate ya, we love ya, and we will see you next time.